Okay, hello everybody. One of the challenges I like to set myself quite often is how quickly I can make a piece of software. So one of the things I did yesterday's lesson was create an entire game in about 10 minutes. And I thought it would make quite a good um, training video. Uh, it's a very, very basic game, but the idea of the game is that you can extend it on. And I just start with a uh, Windows Form application. Uh, as you can see here, I've created one called Game in 10. Uh, it's just .NET C Sharp in Visual Studio 2010. And I'm going to try and build an entire game working in 10 minutes with score and everything. Now, it's going to be a very basic game, as I say extendable wherever you want it but the major uh, feature that you can say here is it's got a score it's got a movement and it has all the facilities to make a two-player game so without further ado just like in 24 I'm going to record this and run this and build this in real time so I'm going to start my timer and see how long it actually takes me ready set go right so we start with the Windows form I'm going to look at the properties of the Windows form and I'm going to make this look more like um, a game so the first thing I'm going to do is change the background color to black I'm going to change the form border style to none because I don't I wanted to fill up the full screen I'm going to set the window state to maximize so it does fill up the full screen and I have set everything I need to to make the background of my game now all games actually need a timer control uh, to control everything that goes on so I'm going to enable a timer control and set the interval to 5 milliseconds. It's important as well for the timer control to be used to actually reset parts of the form. Okay, going on to the code now, I'm going to create a couple of classes. Uh, the first class I'm going to create is the actual bat, as it's called. You may gather already what type of uh, game this might be. So the first thing I'm going to do is obviously set the location of the bat. So I need a variable for, for having the location. I'm also going to have a variable for the size of the bat as well. Um, what else will I need? I'll need... Um, I'm going to need some Boolean variables. Uh, the first one is for moving up. And I'm going to need another one, which I'm just going to copy and paste to save time, for moving down. So there's a bat that can move just up and down. I wonder if you can guess what type of game it is already. Obviously we're going to need to store the score. I'm going to use an integer um, so that all scores after all are sort of um, uh, full numbers. So I'm going to have a variable called an integer to store the score. I'm then going to create an initializer. Now um, every time you cr start creating a new bat you obviously need to set your score to zero. I'm actually going to set my bat size, width and height to fixed values. So if I need to change it later uh, I can just change it in one place and I know it's all going to um, work quite easy. So I've got a nice uh, object that I call bat. Um, obviously I'm going to need a ball bat and ball, what possible type of game could this be? Uh, so I'm just going to modify a couple of items here. The ball's going to obviously have a location. And rather than bat size, it's obviously going to be ball size. Now, I don't actually control the ball, so I won't need to move up and move down. I won't need a score, but one thing I will need is um, a speed. Now the speed obviously is going to have an X and Y uh, detail. Uh, so I'm using a point variable which contains both an X and Y uh, value. I'm going to set the speed actually in the initializer. So speed X equals 5, speed Y equals 5. Let's make it uh, like that. Now uh, the ball size, let's set the ball size as well. We'll set the width to be 20 and the height to be 20. Okay. So it's a, a circular ball. Okay, so I've now got an object called a class which is a framework, a, a template for an object called bat and a template for ball and it's so far taken me three minutes, I'm going to have to accelerate it might be a game in 15 at this rate um, right so the next thing I need to do is obviously create um, some items so I'm going to create a bat for player one and I'm going to create a bat for player two and I'm also going to create a ball And each of these needs to be initialized. So new bat equals new bat equals new ball. 
Being a game, I actually need to set the style of this uh, form so that it doesn't uh, flicker. So control styles, all painting in Windows Media Paint. Control styles, optimize double buffer. Control styles, resize, redraw. And that should be everything we need for this particular form. Okay, let's save it again. Next thing I want to do is obviously go to my little events and I'm going to do my paint events first on my form. Now what I'm going to need to paint are um, the scores on the screen and uh, obviously the two bats and the ball. So I'm going to start by creating a font uh, and I'm going to use um, a system font Calibri in size 20. Right, if I want to now create my uh, bats on the screen, I'm going to do e.graphics.draw, let's do a fill rectangle. And so I need to create it in a certain colour, so we'll do it, um, we'll do them in red, colour.red. And the location of this rectangle is going to be player one dot location and the size is obviously player one dot bat size and let's just finish off our curly brackets there we go so that's player one that's going to appear on the screen let's set player two to appear on the screen so we've not set the locations of either of these yet uh, the other thing we're obviously going to have to create is our ball so uh, for the ball instead of a, a rectangle I'm going to use an ellipse uh, which is an oval I'll make the ball blue um, and obviously this is going to be the main ball location and the main ball ball size. On top of all of this I'm then going to draw my two um, scores um, and I'm going to draw score player score one player one dot score dot to string so I'm going to draw the score out of player one I'm going to use the font title and I'm going to let's do it in white and I need to set it um, I'm going to set it so 80 pixels in from the edge of the screen 40 pixels down um, for the player 2 Hopefully I've got the right number of brackets. Let's have a look. I might put too many on there. I have. Uh, for player 2, I'm going to set um, the location, really, whatever the width of the screen is, minus 210. Should be about right for the size that I want there. Okay, so at the moment it won't actually do anything, but hopefully it should build and it is building so we've got something that works okay the next thing to do then is the timer interval so let's click on the tick okay first of all I want to set up um, my screen so if the timer interval equals 5 which it does at the moment and if it doesn't we'll do it somewhere else right, as soon as it's set up I can turn the timer one interval to equal 10 so we know that that will work fine. So player one dot location dot x equals. Let's move it in 20 from the edge, and we'll set the y location to be um, this dot height minus the player one dot uh, size bat size dot height divided by two. So that should give us in the center of the screen hopefully um, and then player 2's location is obviously over the other side of the screen the y will be the same but this will be at this dot width a minus player 2 dot bat size dot width minus 20 so I'm moving in from the 20 from 20 pixels in from the edge of the screen um, now the main ball location main ball dot location dot x equals uh, this dot width. I'm just going to do it roughly in the middle and the y height divided by 2. So what we need to do now is uh, try running it and see what happens first of all. See if we've actually got ourselves a working game. Hey we've got a uh, score one, score two, we've got a blue ball, red ball and we've got um, an item on the screen but that's about it 
Uh, is timer one actually running? It is apparently. It's got an interval of five. Uh, it's obviously not working too well for the location dot y. Um, I'm guessing I'm going to just set these to 20 for a minute because something seems to be going a bit funny with those. See if that helps at all. Okay, I think it's because it's probably not drawing yet. So let's do refresh the screen if the timer's on 10. That's better. So we've got two paddles and a ball in the middle. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, we need to obviously move the ball. So we'll start with moving the ball every time we um, tick the uh, ball. Uh, main ball dot speed dot x. What I'm going to do is set the location of the main ball and increase it by whatever the speed currently is. Okay, so uh, what I need to do obviously uh, is check to see if it hits anything. Um, I also need to move the balls around and I've only got a few seconds left so it's not going to be a 10 minute video after all. Right, so let's do the moving up and moving down. Um, so if player 1 is moving up, what can we do? We set the player 1 dot location dot uh, y minus equals 10. So we're going to go up by 10 pixels. If move down equals true, we're going to increase that by 10. So we can move it up and down. Obviously player 2 will do exactly the same. If I was doing this properly, uh, this would be part of the player class rather than stuck in this timer loop, but I'm running out of time. Um, so that moves, allows the player and the ball to move up and down. Um, we really need to check um, where the player location is. So if we do that next, uh, player one, if uh, player one location dot y is less than zero, if it's going off the screen, let's set it to not go off the screen. So when you reach the edge of the top, it won't go off the screen. And we'll do the same thing um, off the bottom. So that'd be player one dot location dot y. Obviously, it's the bottom of the bat, so we need to take the bottom of the bat, bat size dot height is greater than the height of the screen uh, player one dot location dot y equals the height of the screen minus the bat size so the whole bat still appears on the screen okay and we can do the same thing again with player two obviously we haven't got any controls yet well, I'm going to do that keyboard in a short while Okay, so I've set the player one location and player y location. Should we set the keyboard controls just to try those out? Okay, we're going to go use key down and key up on this. So I'm going to double click on form one key down and double click on form one key up. Um, the important things I'm going to need for these, first of all, it's going to be a full screen application. So I'm going to start with if the key code equals escape, let's stop the program from running. Right, if the uh, key code is um, uh, Q, let's set player one dot move up equals true. Uh, if it's the A key, move down equals true. And then for the player two controls, uh, let's use O and L. Now see this sets them, we want to clear them as soon as you move your key, lift your key up. So I'm going to do the same thing and key up, but set these now to false. Now the ball is just going to go flying off now, but at least hopefully I should be able to control two bats. The ball's just going to disappear, I can't go off the edges. That's bat two, and I can control both of them at the same time because it's um, non-direct uh, control. So that's all working okay, and the escape button works. That's good to know. Okay, so our keys work. Now we need to just get the ball to actually uh, do what it needs to do. So how do we do that? Right, first of all, we need to look at the location of the ball. So uh, after all the player ones, if main ball 
dot location dot x is less than zero. That means it's gone into the goal on the player one side. So player two score plus plus. We we'll add one to the player two score. Then we'll set the main ball location um, to equal the middle of the screen again. Divide by two. Main ball dot location dot y equals this dot height divided by two. So it's in the middle of the screen. Um, if main ball location uh, x is greater than this dot width, this will be a player one score, and we'll do the same thing again. Um, the other thing I want to do with both of these is change the direction. So main ball speed dot x equals the opposite of what it currently is. So now hopefully, although we can't actually hit them with our bat, we will see that the ball, as it hits the sides, it's going off the screen still at the bottom, so you can't actually see. So let's get the, the ball stopping going off the bottom of the screen now. So if main ball dot location dot y, um, if it's less than zero, um, if I put this in second brackets, or main ball dot location dot y is greater than this dot height well, all we'll do is make the main ball speed y the opposite 15 minutes in now and we've got our bouncing ball on the screen at the moment it won't go it will just go through the bats because the bats haven't got any colli object collision but you can see it's scoring OK and it's going into the goals and everything seems to be working OK. Right, so last thing we need to do is obviously object collision on the bats. So, if, let's create a rectangle around our ball. Main ball dot location, main ball dot ball size. So if the rectangle for the ball size intersects with a rectangle for player one, uh, player one, location, player one dot bat size. Um, we're going to set the speed of the x to be the opposite, like that. Now to make that work for both balls, what I do is copy that, put an or and say about it being intersecting with the player 2. Let's just check my brackets. I think I need another one. So now what should happen instantly is... Oh, you get a build error because I've missed off a bracket somewhere. I think it's off there. Let's have a look. Yep. Brackets everywhere. And so now, if I'm able to, I now have full object collision as well. Last thing to do, we don't want the mouse cursor on, so let's turn the mouse cursor off. Cursor, dot visible. Uh, cursor off or something like that. I can't remember how you turn off the cursor. Let's say uh, hide. That's how you do it. Of course it is. So now with no mouse cursor on the screen either, we have our full game of Pong. Completed in exactly 17 minutes and 59 seconds. So if I move the properties out of the way, let's go through it again. I've created um, a class for the bat and a class for the ball with a point for location, a size for bat size, and then move up and move down the two Boolean variables. They're true if they're moving up and false if they're not. So and then true if it's moving down, false if it's not. An integer for the score, so we're storing the score in each bat, and then I initialize the score width and height. If you want to change the width and height of the bat, you just change those values there. The ball again, very similar, location, size and speed. We set both 
the speed on the x and y axis we set the width and the height of the ball there and then in our form code we create a player 1, player 2 and main ball object hide the cursor and set the style which is the standard uh, way of drawing for games the main uh, event that fires is my paint event uh, which creates a uh, font creates two field rectangles for the bats, a field ball for the ball and then draws the two scores on the screen. Timer is set as an interval of five first of all which is used to reset the screen at the start of the game finally setting the timer every 10 milliseconds when you've got the timer firing in the main game itself it is moving the ball first of all it checks the player location it up move up equals true if it does it allows it to move up if move down equals true it allows it to move down it does the same with player 2 it then checks the location of player 1 and player 2 to check it's not going off the screen and stops it from going off the screen it then does the same thing with the ball location so it checks to see if there's been a goal scored by it going through to um, the le total left hand side or total right hand side and it also makes sure that the ball can't go off the screen on the top and bottom finally we've got this big long piece of code which I'm going to cut down so that you can see it a bit clearer so let's get all those curly brackets um, out of the way um, I create a rectangle of my ball I then check to see if it intersects with a rectangle of uh, player 1 or does the ball again there intercept with the rectangle of player 2 if it does move the ball in the opposite direction on the x-axis so if that's the case it will always then bounce off the the bat I then tell the screen to refresh automatically my control keys are if I hit escape it closes the application down Q and A control the player moving player 1 moving and O and L control player 2 moving and that's it, a full game written in 17 minutes and 59 seconds.